Hi there. Okay, this is chapter 8.1, defining and using sequences and series. So the essential question for this chapter section is, how can you write a rule for the nth term of a sequence? Now, this nth term they're talking about here is, is just some particular term, the nth term. It could be the 10th term if n is 10. It could be the 100th term if n equals 100. Okay, so it says a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. There can be a limited number or an infinite number of terms of a sequence. So we name the terms a sub one for our first term, a sub two for our second, a sub three for our third, a sub four for our fourth, dot, 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 a sub n for some particular term, and then it can continue forever. Here's an example. One, four, seven, 10, and then there's a whole bunch in between, and our a sub n is three n minus two, um, so what they're saying is you multiply this by three and subtract two and you get the next term. So if I put four in here, 12 minus two is 10 put, um, and so on and so on. Does that even work? Put 10 in here, 30 minus two is 28. Put seven in here, 21 minus two is 18. Put four in, 12 minus two is 10. Put one in, Three minus two is one. So I don't know where they got this, but anywhere that's what we're going to be looking at in this chapter section. Uh, it says what you will learn, use sequence notation to write terms of a sequence, write a rule for the nth term of a sequence, sum the terms of a sequence to obtain a series. Okay, so right there, a series is a sum of the sequence terms and use summation notation. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so it says core concept sequences. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. A finite sequence is a function that has a limited number of terms and whose domain is the finite set one, two, three, dot, 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 all the way out to your nth term being the last term. The values in the range are called the terms of the sequence. So in this domain, one is a sub one, and the range is the first term, domain two, range a sub two, and so on and so on. So the relative position is your domain and the term in the sequence is your range. An infinite series, I'm sorry, an infinite sequence is a function that continues without stopping and whose domain is a set of positive integers. Here are examples of finite sequences and infinite sequences. So finite sequence would be the sequence two, four, six, eight and stopping at eight. And the infinite sequence would be two, four, six, eight and going on forever and ever and all they're doing is adding two. A sequence can be specified by an equation or a rule. For example, both sequences above can be described by the rule a sub n equals two times n, or f of n equals two n. Okay, so what they're doing is they're taking two times the number of terms. Two times two is four, two times four is eight. Hmm a sub n equals 2n. So the first term would be 2. The second term would be 4. The third term would be 2 times 3, and so on. Yes, yeah, so n is the number you're plugging in, and what you get out is your sequence um, value, the term in the sequence becoming the relative from the relative position. All right, so let's take a look at some of these examples. Okay, so example one says writing the terms of a sequence. So the first thing we want to do in this is we're just starting with the basics. And it says to write the first six terms of a, a sub n equals 2n plus 5. So the first term is going to be called a sub 1. And what that means is we're going to take 2, and since n is 1, we're going to plug 1 in for n plus 5, and we're going to get a result. So a sub 1 is 2 times 1, which is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. So a sub one equals seven. And it says, do this for the first six. So I'm just gonna write these now, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five, and a sub six. First six terms. And all we do is do substitution for all these. So it's two times two plus five. Two times two is four, plus five is nine. Uh, two times three plus five 
is three times two is six plus five is 11. And now you see that there is a pattern. It is increasing the value of the term by two. So this is two times four, which is eight. Eight plus five is 13. This one's going to be two times five, which is 10 plus five equals 15. And finally, two times six, which is 12 plus five. 12 plus five is 17. So that is the first six terms of 2m plus five. Okay, so now let's switch to B. F of n equals this. It's a negative three base with an exponent of n minus one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say F of one. Okay, so in this case, it's a function notation. So I'm going to just substitute this in and I want the first six terms. So it's F of two, F of three, F of four, F of five, and f of six. So I'm going to substitute in a one for, for n. It goes right here. So this equals negative three to the zero, which equals anything to the zero is one. So we're going to have the base of negative three every time. And this is going to be two minus one. So that's going to become negative three to the first power, which is simply negative three. And then I'm going to do f of th three, which is negative three to the three minus one. And that's going to be negative three squared. And negative three squared, here I should keep that in parentheses, by the way. Negative three squared is nine. A negative times a negative is positive, so be careful with that. This one's going to be negative three to the four minus one, which equals negative three to the third power. And a negative times a negative is positive times a negative is negative. So what you're going to see now is this is going to oscillate between positive and negative, positive when our exponent's even and negative when our exponent's odd. So negative three or three, negative three to the third power is going to be a negative 27. Okay, so now negative three to the five minus one is going to be negative three to the fourth power, which is even, so it's gonna be positive. Three times three is nine times three is 27 times three is 81. And then finally, negative three to the six minus one, which would be negative three to the fifth power. Oops. And negative three to the fifth power, five being odd, this is gonna be a negative answer. And it's going to be, since the fourth is 81, 81 times 3 is 243. Okay, so there are the first six terms of this sequence. 1, negative 3, 9, negative 27, 81, negative 243. So if we were to graph that, that would look pretty interesting. And the x's are getting, or the, the n's, I guess you would say, are getting larger, or the f of n's are our y's are getting larger positive and negative, and it's going back and forth over the x-axis. Okay, so there's example one. Now you should be able to do problem number six and 12 in your exercises. Okay, here's example two, and it says write rules for sequences, describe the pattern, write the next term, and write a rule for the nth term of this sequence, a negative one, negative eight, negative 27, negative 64, and so on and so on. So you can write these terms. Um, one cubed is one, two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, four cubed is 64. So I do see um, a pattern here and it's to the power of three but our base is not positive, it's negative. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, well that is uh, negative one cubed, and this is negative two cubed, and this is negative three to the third power, and this is negative four cubed, and then it continues. Okay. Um, so a sub five would be negative five cubed. So what does it say? Describe a pattern, write the next term. So the next term is right here, negative five 
cubed. So it says write the next term. So you're looking for a pattern here. The pattern is cubing, and the next term would be negative 5 cubed. Okay, and so negative 5 cubed is negative 125. Okay, so that's the answer to writing the next term. There is our answer. Our next term is negative 125. And now we need to write a rule for the term. So we're going to say a sub n equals, and it is going to be negative. This is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. And that just happens to be our n. So it's negative n to the third power. So a sub n equals negative n cubed is the rule for the term, rule for the nth term of this sequence. Okay, so that's how you do these. Let me move all of this over just a little bit, just so they're not in the way of part b. All right, so here, let's take a look at b. So we have zero, we have two, we have six, we have 12. We have to look for a pattern. Is it being doubled? Two, no, it skipped four. Zero squared is zero, two squared is four. 3 squared is 9, so it's not squaring. Um, let's see. So 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. So I'm seeing a pattern there. Okay, so here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to say a sub or I'm going to do what we did here. If this is 0 times 1, 1 being our first term, okay, and then we take 1 times 2, that's our second term, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 4 is 12. So it's 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. The next one would obviously be the next term we're looking for, which would be four times five. So four times five is 20. So that's writing the rule for the next term. All right. And now we have to write a rule for this term. So F of five equals, so we can do this as function notation. F of 5 equals 4 times 5, which equals 20. Okay, there's our function. So the rule would be F of n equals. And here's where this can get a little tricky. If n is 5, then I'm going to put a 5 right here, or an n right here. I'm going to put an n right here. 5n, 5n. Well, what is, how do we get 4? How do we get a 4 from our term? Well, it is 1 less than the term. This is our first term, and 1 minus 1 is 0. This is our second term, and 2 minus 1 is 1. This is our third term. 3 minus 1 is 2. So what we're doing is we're subtracting 1 from the term number. Okay, so for example, f of 5, well, 5 minus 1 is 4, and times 5 is 20. And so there is the um, rule for the nth term. So if I put 100 in here, it'd be 100 minus 1, or 99 times 100, which would be 9,900. OK, so that's how you find the next term, try to find a pattern, then write a rule, and then find the next term. So now you should be able to do problem numbers 15 and 20 in your exercises. Okay, so example three is <clears throat> solving a real life problem. All right, so I'm sure you've all been to grocery stores and see how they stack apples up like this. You work in a grocery store and are stacking apples in the shape of a square pyramid with seven layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, write a rule for the number of apples in each layer, then graph the sequence. So what we're going to do is, well, the layer, the top layer, one, layer one, is going, we're going to work our way up. See how it says first layer. We're going to work our way from top to bottom. 
So layer one, number of apples, A sub N, well, that's one squared, okay? So since this is a square pyramid, the number on the length side will equal the number on the width side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven apples by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven apples, it should be. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, okay? So it's one equals one squared. Okay, so the next one, the second layer, well, it's a two by two, so that's two squared, which is four apples. So there's one, two, three, four, and so on and so on. So it's just perfect squares, whoops. So it's just perfect squares here. So I'm going to go to three, and there is our three squared, which is nine. So we're gonna keep doing this until we get out to seven. So step number one is make a table showing the first three layers. Okay, you could keep going um, and you don't need these pictures. You could just have one, two, three and say one squared equals one, two squared equals four, three squared equals nine, four squared equals 16 and so on and so on. And then we are going to plot these. So it says, um, write a rule for the number of apples and then graph the sequence. So write a rule for the number of apples in each layer from the table. You can see that A sub one equals one squared. So it's A sub N equals N squared. N being the number of rows. So row two is two, two squared is four. Row three is N equals three, three squared is nine and so on. So the rule is A sub N equals N minus two. So there's our rule. And then it says to graph the sequence. So if this is going to be N, and then this is going to be a of n, a sub n. And we want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers. Okay. So obviously, if we have zero, we don't have a zero row. That's not an invisible apple. We're starting at one. One squared is one. So I go over to one and go up to one, which is about there. And then two squared is four. So go over to two and four would be approximately here, just under five. And three squared is nine. So go over to three and up to nine. Four squared is 16. Here's four. Uh, here's 15. 16 would be about here. And then five squared is 25. Go over to five, up to 25, which is here. And six squared is 36 over six up to 30. Uh, five is here, 36 will be about here. And finally, 49. So go over to seven, just shy of 50. So as you can see, this is curving up. It's the right side of a parabola, it's quadratic. And so we plotted the points one, one, two, four, three, nine, all the way up to 749. And here is the graph. Okay, so we found a rule and we graphed it. And so now you should be able to do problem numbers 29 in the exercise. Okay, so the core concept here, series and summation notation, when the terms of a sequence are added together, okay, when the terms are added together, the resulting expression is a series. A series can be finite or infinite. So if you have a finite series, that's coming from a finite sequence. So if the first four terms or the only four terms of a sequence were two, four, six, and eight, <clears throat> the sum would be two plus four, which is six, plus six is 12, plus eight is 20. And so the series would equal 20. An infinite series has an infinite solution because adding infinite values is going to give you infinity for your sum. So you can use summation notation to write a series. For example, the two series above can be written in summation notation as follows. So this is the capital Greek letter sigma, and it means the sum of. So when you see this, you say the sum of. And then you say the function 2i, so the sum of all values of 2i from i equals 1 to our n, which is 4, and that's how you would say this. So this is said right here, how you would say this is 
the sum of all values of 2i from i equals 1 to 4. So for both series, the index of summation is i and the lower limit of summation is 1. Okay, let's say that again. For both series, the index of summation is an italic letter i and the lower limit of the summation is one because it says i equals one. That's our starting point. The upper limit of summation is four in the finite series and infinity for the infinite series. Summation notation is also called sigma notation because it uses the uppercase Greek letter sigma written as that. Okay, so there's your introduction to sigma and sigma notation for series. Okay, example four, writing series using summation notation. So now we're putting that last uh, key concept to work. Uh, write each series using summation notation. So what's my first term? Well, here's another thing we can do. We can always say, well, a sub one is 25, comma, a sub two, and I don't wanna put them on across, put them below, line them up. A sub two equals 50 and a sub three equals 75 and then way out here is 250 so there's a bunch of values in between so how do you get 25 well it's 25 times 1 okay so if we multiply by the term n n times 1 and or i'm sorry n times 25 times n is 25 25 times n which is 2 is 50 and 25 times n which is th n is 3 is 75 so what we get here is 25 times one. This one is 25, 25 times one. This is 25 times two. And this is 25 times three. And the number in parentheses just happens to be our number of our term or our N, okay? So in essence, this is A sub N equals 25 N. So there's our rule. Um, but if I go back, we're doing series and we use I as the index summation. So we're not gonna use N here, we're gonna use I. So let me erase that. There's our rule. Let me just leave it for now. But we want a summation, we want sigma, okay? And we want I to equal our first term, which is one. Okay, so that's our first term. So A sub I equals, so actually I could change these. Let me do that. Change these ends to a, an I. So this is A sub I equals 25 times I, if you will, where I equals one, two, three. And what is this I? Um, well, 250, so then if we're multiplying by 25 each time, you can take the term and divide by 25, and that's gonna be 10. So we're going I equals one to 10 of 25 I. Okay, so we're taking 25 times the number of our terms, or our I in this case, not N, and A sub I equals 25 I. We're starting with the first term, A sub one, and 250 was 25 times 10. So our first term is one and we go up to 10. So here's one, a sub two, a sub three, and we skip four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we finished at 10. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do that again. This is an infinite one. So first of all, we have a half. So we're gonna say a sub i, equals. So this is our first term here. So i is one. And what did we do to get two? It's only one more. So a, this is our second term, third term, fourth term. So i is our i is our value above our numerator. And what do we do to i to get two? Well, if i is one, how do you get two? Well, you add one. So this is i plus one because these are all one more than our numerator. So here's our rule, a sub i equals i over i plus one. 
Okay, so if I plugged in a four, that'd be four over four plus one, which is five, and I get four fifths for my fourth term, a sub four. Okay, so I want to write a rule for this. So you put your sigma notation. I know this is hard to draw at first, but you get practicing and it's okay. So I equals one is our first term. Our rule goes out in front, one over, or I over I plus one goes out in front here. So there is our setup. And since this is going on forever and ever and never stopping, our upper bound is infinity. And that's what we put over top. So this is writing the series using summation notation of this series here. Okay. And so now you should be able to do problem numbers 31 and 34 in your exercises. Okay, so here's example five. They gave us summation notation and they want us to find the sum. Okay, so it says find the sum and the sum of the series. And notice they use a K here. So we don't always have to use I, you can use any variable you want. And in this case, they're using K. And our lower bound does not have to always start at one. In this example, it starts at four and it goes until eight. So the first thing you do is you write sigma notation as what they gave you and you write k equals four to eight of three plus k squared so the sum of all k values from four to eight of three plus k squared so all we're going to do is plug in these values so my first term is going to be three plus four squared care for you put the squared it's only squaring the four, it's not squaring the sum of the two numbers. So the square goes inside. So there's my first term. And then plus three plus, okay, is now five, the next one squared, plus three plus uh, six squared, plus three plus seven squared, plus three plus eight squared. So let me change the other one too. Um, actually, yeah, let me change the other one. Let me just do this. I want to point out to you that this number here is our starting point and this number here is our end point. So we started at four, five, six, seven, eight, stop. And now we're going to add them up. So we're gonna simplify these. Uh, four squared is 16, 16 plus three is 19. Oops, I don't need parentheses anymore. So I put 19 here. Plus 25 plus three, plus 36 plus three, plus 49 plus three, plus 64 plus three. And then we find this sum, nine, 17, 26, 28, 35, carry the three, four, six, nine, 14, 20. So the sum of three plus K squared from K equals four to eight is 205. Okay, so that's how you do summation notation, finding the sum of a series. Now you should be able to do problem numbers 40 and 42 in your exercises. Okay, core concept again, formulas for special series. So the sum of n terms of one, i equals one to n of one is always n. Okay. So what does that mean? i equals one to n is going to be n, the number of terms, because one, plus one, plus one, plus one, and say constant, and however many times you add it, which is your n, is going to be your sum. Okay, if you add three ones, you get three. If you add 10 ones, you get 10. Sum of first n positive integers, so if i equals one to n of i equals n times n plus one over two, that's the first n positive integers. So let me explain that. So first term i equals one, that would be one, one plus one, over two, which is one plus two over two, which is three halves, okay? Sum of the first n positive integers. So if I start at one, 
of i and go to n, I get three halves plus and so on and so on and so on. So if i is one, I get one. If i is two, I get one plus two, which is two, and then one plus two is three, and so on and so on and so on. So if I'm looking for, and try to explain this, if I'm looking, for, let's give an example here. So if I have the summation notation and I say I equals one of I all the way up to say a thousand, well, what I'm doing is taking one plus two plus three, that's too big. Let me just go to say five. So what is this? This is I equals one, then I equals two, then I equals three, then I equals four, then I equals five, and I'm going to add those, and I'm going to get 10. Just kidding, 15. 15, okay? Well, if I look at this, I have five terms, which is n. n plus one is six divided by two. Six times five is 30 divided by two is 15, okay? This is coming from a discovery of a famous mathematician named Goss. So you just add the first, add up all the terms and divide by how many terms, or divide by two, cut it in half in other words. Five plus one is six, four plus two is six. Let's add all the sixes, divide by two because you're adding them twice and so on. I'm gonna get into that in further, but here it is. So let me just do one more example for you. Let's erase this and this here, and we're just going to check another value. So let's say I go up to uh, eight. Well, that's going to be one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight, because we're plugging in the values for i, simply one, two, three, and so on. So one plus two is three, plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus five is 15, plus six is 21, plus seven is 28, plus eight is 36. Well, if I take n, which is eight, times eight plus one, which is nine, and divide it by two, I get eight times nine divided by two, which is 72 divided by two, which is 36. Okay? So now they're saying the sum of squares of the first n positive integers is the rule where we take one and plug it in. One squared is one, two squared is four, one plus four is five, and so on. The rule is n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. Okay, so let me just do one here. So let's say, let's do i equals one and the sum i equals one to, let's just go out to four of i squared. Well, that's going to be, plug one in, one squared is one, plug two in, two squared is four, plug three in, three squared is nine, plug four in, four squared is 16. Add them up, nine and 16 is 25 and five is 30. So now if I check this, my n in this case is four. So four times four plus one, times two times four plus one. It's a pretty bad plus. Let me fix that plus. Plus one all over six. Hmm. Four times four plus one times eight plus one, which is nine, all divided by six. Five times four is 20. Nine times 20 is 180. Divide that by six and I get 30. Wow. All right, so there are two rules that are pretty interesting for the sum of n terms when the positive integers, squares of positive integers, or constant functions, or constant sequences, series. Okay, so I, we're gonna take some a look at some examples of these. Okay, example six says using a formula for a sum. How many apples are in the stack in example three? 
So let me go back to example three. Here's example three. So it was i squared is our function. So now we're just going to change this to uh, a sub i equals i squared. And we want to go up to seven. All right. So go back here. So a sub i equals i squared. That's our function. So we write the function notation. Let me just come over here in the center. And capital sigma. And we want i to start at 1. Our top row had one apple in it. Or So I should say our top row, our first row is 1. And our last row is 7, the bottom. So we're going from 1 to 7 of i squared. That equals 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 7 squared. So I'm just going to do this down below. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, and 7 squared is 49. So that's going to simplify to <clears throat> 1 plus 4 is 5, 14 plus the 6 is 20, 25, 31, 40. So it ends in 0. I'm carrying a 4 over to the first 10. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 4 is 14. So there are 140 apples in the stack. Okay, so that's how you do those types of examples. So now you should be able to do problem number 50 in your exercise. Okay, I forgot to show the shortcut, which is the rule that they gave us on the prior page. So I brought it over. Sum of squares of first n positive integers. Well, we have a sum of a square, i squared, is this function. So instead, all I had to do is this. Well, n is 7. So I'm just going to put 7 here, 7 plus 1 here, 2 times 7 plus 1 here, and divide by 6. So that's going to be 7 times 8 times Five, four, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15, and divide by 6. So 7 times 8 is 56, so maybe it's not any easier, but if you had a calculator, you could do this. I prefer not to use calculators. 6 times 5 is 30, 25, and 3 is 28, 0, 6, 5, 0, 4, 7, and 1 is 8. It's 840 divided by 6. 6 goes into 8 once with a remainder of 2. 6 goes into 24 four times, and that's 140, which is what we got here. Okay, so either way you want to do it, if it's really, really large, like if n was a 100, you wouldn't be writing out 100 terms. You'd be using this shortcut. Okay, so there's the shortcut on squares. Okay, that brings us to the end of chapter 8.1. Hopefully you have somewhat of an understanding on sequences and series. So if you haven't done so already, here are the problems I assigned. Thanks for watching and have a great day.